The Gundam Aegis is a mobile suit from the anime series Mobile Suit Gundam Seed. It was developed by the Earth's Alliance Atlantic Federation as part of their G project, which produced several advanced mobile suits. The Aegis Gundam is notable for its ability to transform between a mobile suit and mobile armor mode. This transformation enhances its mobility and allows for different combat strategies. The Aegis Gundam plays a significant role in Mobile Suit Gundam Seed, as one of the 5G Project Mobile Suits stolen by the Sojak Alliance of Freedom Treaty, or ZEP. Atron Sala, a ZEP pilot, and the main character Kira Yamato's childhood friend, pilots the Aegis. Throughout the series, the Aegis engages in several battles against Kira and his strike Gundam, showcasing its powerful weaponry and transformation abilities. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're taking a close look at the latest addition to the Robot Spirits version anime New Generations line, the Aegis Gundam. We'll dive in and see if they've truly captured the essence of this incredible Gundam in action figure form. Let's kick things off with the packaging. The front features a small window, giving us a sneak peek at the figure inside. You'll also see photos of the Aegis Gundam in both its mobile suit and mobile armor modes, highlighting its ability to transform. This is figure number 319 in the Robot Spirits line. At the top, we have the mobile number and name, GAT X303. Aegis Gundam version anime. The bottom showcases a clear photo of the mobile armor mode. On the right side, there's a full image of the mobile suit mode, while the left side displays various pictures of the figure, highlighting its accessories and features. Finally, the back features more promotional pictures and a scene of the Aegis battling the Ale Strike Gundam. Now, let's unbox this figure and see what it has to offer. First impression out of the box. Wow, there's a ton of accessories here. We've got alternate hands, blast effects, energy blades, and weapons. Everything you'd expect from the version anime line. There's also a manual included, which I'm sure will not only guide us through the figure's articulation, but also its transformation process. Whenever I think of transforming Gundams, my first worry is always about flimsiness. But holding the Aegis in hand, it feels surprisingly solid. The overall matte red finish is stunning. Starting with the head, uh, they've used metallic green for the eyes and metallic blue for the head fins. There's also a subtle use of dark gray to separate and define the Balkan guns, which is a nice touch. The lighter matte gray on the massive shoulder armor adds a great contrast. And the navy blue in the chest armor enhances the red and gray color separation beautifully. One of the most striking features of the Aegis Gundam is the large waist side armor and the cables that serve as its backpack. These are inevitable due to its transformation gimmick into mobile armor mode. Another unique design element are the protruding blades on the arm gauntlets and toes. Initially, I found them a bit odd, but they quickly grew on me, especially when they transform into energy blades. So far, the Gundam Seed releases in the Robot Spirit version anime line have had excellent articulation. I'm hoping the Aegis follows suit. But I suspect some compromises might have been made due to its transformation gimmick. Let's dive in and check it out. 
starting with the head, it's a ball joint connection and moves smoothly and offers a good range of motion. The shoulder armor looks impressive, but the shoulder connection tends to pop out occasionally, which can be a bit frustrating. Let's check in the transformation if this has something to do with it. We have a bicep cut. And a double jointed elbows, allowing for some dynamic poses. According to the instruction, the torso can lead forward. Uh, but the waist armor gets in the way a bit. There's also waist rotation. Moving on to the legs, there's a drop down mechanism that enhances articulation. We've got a tie cut, double jointed knees, and a decent ankle articulation. which all contribute to some great lower body poses. Overall, aside from the shoulder connection that keeps popping out, articulation is pretty decent and worthy of the version anime designation. For accessories, the Aegis Gundam comes loaded. We get 10 alternate hands in addition to the closed space already on the figure. All these hands can be conveniently stored in this trademark storage part provided by Robot Spirits version anime. We also have a long beam gun which fits securely in the hand. The shield connects easily like this. Next, we have four blade beams for the toes and arm gauntlets. If you look back at my intro photos, you'll see I've already tried them on. However, a word of caution. These blade beams are made of brittle material. As you can see, I've already broken one, so I'm hesitant to reconnect them today. Be extra careful when attaching them. There are also four blast off effects that connect like this. Additionally, we have two alternate head fins to choose from. I think this Larger blast up effect is meant for the mobile armor mode, so we'll use that later. There are power connector parts which I believe will be useful during transformation. Lastly, there's this tool to help us separate joints, such as the alternate hands. 
Let us start with the transformation into mobile armor. First, we need to replace this V fin into this. After replacing the V fin, the second step is to unlock this chest portion. There. Unlock it there. After you unlock it, the next step is this will be free for this. So you can do this. Then you can do this. So that's how it looks like in there. Now you know why we had to change the V-fin because if you don't change the V-fin, that will be too long. You know, this will be too long. Anyway, next step, this will be like that and then move. Uh, wait, the head is coming with it. Uh huh. There. So it should be like that. Next, you're going to have to move this whole portion like that. So that's how it looks like up there. Then this chest portion is locked between the two. There's a tab there, so you remove the tab. Then, yeah, you remove the tab by moving it up. There. there are the tabs. So I removed it by holding it up. Next, rotate this like that. So it should look like that now. Now, this is where the parts forming begins. You remove this side armor. Oops. That's what I said when I, that's what I mean when the hand easily pops. Let's remove them first. There. Note that the removing the hands here are not part of the transformation. They just popped out. And I realized that it is easier to remove this portion and also this portion without the hands. Okay, now that we have all of those out of the way and I put the hands back, we need to remove this. Now this is the where the first connector part goes. So this one, this tab here will go there. And then you will see a, you will see that which should connect with that one. So that tab need to connect here and then that one. Let's see if I can do this on camera.
yeah, basically that's how it will look like. Let me just uh, fix it up off camera. Ensure that the legs are on the are located on the top, meaning the drop down is at, at its highest point, and then do this. Now the waist armor will go here. After which, you remove these hands. And if you're having problem removing them, remember we have this tool that you can use. Again, it popped out. Let me just put that back. And let me just do it off camera because the tab for the hands is a square, so you have to specifically match it exactly here in order to put it in there. So let me just fix that off camera. Okay, now that we put that back, I'm pretty sure that won't be the last time it will pop up. You do this. First that, and then uh, don't pop off. Okay, you rotate that. Then you rotate that so it will look like that. Okay, my mistake. It should be like it should be positioned like that, so that this are when you put this down. You know, it will be better if we just do that off because they both popped up. So what I did is. I drop this armor, yeah, and it should match like that. Same thing here. Rotate them like that, and then pull it down a little there. So they should duck in like that. Okay, so far I don't see any reason why this is designed to easily pop off, but before you put them back there to make it your transformation easier, rotate this, this, and from then on put the hands back. Let me just do this off camera because that is really very troublesome thing to do okay this is how it should look like uh once we rotate this and if the hands are still there and then do again this is gonna be hard to do with the hands so i'm just gonna do an easier way to do it this is how you're supposed to do it if these hands don't pop up but because they pop up let me just do it the easier way so what we're gonna do is this one rotate them already like that same thing on the other side put it like that 
And then this, thinking you put it like that. So that's how it should look. And then go lock it up. And that's a simpler way. Now let me just do that on the other side of camera. So if everything works out perfectly, the, the hand should look like that. So as it turns out, there are these two connector parts that you also need to connect as you work on the hands. So let us remove that, which is not going to be a problem because there, because as I said, the connection here is my main problem in this figure. It easily pops up. It just easily pops up. Now remember that this is a square shape pin, so make sure that it is look it is positioned like that in order to connect this. There. Now you can connect them back here. Okay. I think actually that connector joint made the connection more secure. Okay, that's good news. So that's how they look like once you put that connector. And as I said, that actually makes this connection more secure. So I can move it more like this now, you know, without worrying that it will get disconnected. Now for the leg portion, we should just do this, and that, same thing here, that, and then rotate it. Rotate it. So it should look like that. Now let's just fix them up like that. We all know that this mobile armor of the Aegis, you know, it's mobile armor, mobile armor form. It's one of the weirdest looking mobile armor in Gundam history. Okay, we're almost there. So this is how it should look like. Okay, now remember this side armor. No waist side armor. Connect them there. So that's how it looks like. It's actually starting to look good now. Now, this you can use to tab in the gun or then and then on the other side, the shield. But I'm not going to do that because the mobile armor will just look weird with these two, two weapons attached to it. So this is the finished mobile armor form of the Aegis. And may I say, it, it actually looks pretty good. And aside from the fact that the hands easily pops up, which now that I've done the transformation, I don't know why it is designed that way. Because, yeah, I know that you have to attach that. I don't know why they have to engineer that. Why didn't they just make that a fixed part of the hand and, you know, somehow think of a way to make it shorter when he is in mobile suit form? But, nah, I don't know. The attachment made the connection stronger, though. But, yeah, again, the connection of the hands to the shoulder, that's my main problem with this figure. Now, there is actually this part. Just give me a minute. 
sorry there is this part which basically you can use i'm not sure if you see it in the manual to make the limbs be more stable when you open them wider like that but you know for me it looks weird i'm not gonna do that because I want to put this blast effect on it. So, yeah, instead of that, doing that, I'm just going to do this. And then, remember this blast effect? I'm gonna put it there. There. I'm gonna do that. So, yeah, that looks cool. If I if I know correctly, this is the correct this is the correct position of this mobile armor. This is supposed to be the front and this is supposed to be the back. So this booster makes sense to me. So this I haven't really watched Gundam Seed for a while now, so I'm not sure. Is this a boost effect or some kind of a, or is it recreating some kind of a scene? I'm not sure. Or basically, does it mean that when I put this here, this should not be there because it's basically trying to boost itself away like that? Anyway, guys, please leave in the comment what exactly this is. This a specific scene when wherein if it if it wants to go away pretty fast, it use this boost like that so it can, it has boost it has boost both from the back and the front anyway this actually makes the mobile armor look pretty cool okay so i guess this finishes my review of this robot spirits version enemy gundam ages and I, I i actually enjoyed it you know aside from that frustration that i get because of those hands that keep popping up the transformation is actually pretty intuitive. It's it, uh, looking at the manual, uh, and then because the manual is also in Japanese, I thought that I was going to have a hard time transforming it. But no, nah, it it was actually very very intuitive, and I actually had a lot of fun transforming it. And I know that this transformation, this mobile armor form of Aegis looks pretty weird, but if you are a Gundam Seed fan like me, you will really learn to love this form. To be honest, the Gundam Aegis versus the Gundam Destiny, I mean, sorry, not Gundam Destiny, the Justice Gundam, which the which is piloted by, uh, by the same guy, uh, Atron, I prefer this mobile armor more than the Justice Gundam. Anyway, guys, if you've reached this part of my video, thank you very much. And again, thank you for the support. Uh, and, uh, and for those people who subscribe to me, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. And again, guys, enjoy life and keep collecting.